We're stripping it down, boys and girls. <laughs> We're gonna leave out our two girl people. Yeah, our two girl um, uh, viewers. Viewers, yeah. So what we's gonna do with the 301? We never ride this thing much. Uh, the torque converter needs adjusting. We need to adjust the springs because it takes off instantly. You sneeze yeah. on the throttle, you're goosing it. It's goosed. Yeah, geese. Basically, it. strip everything off. Yeah. So except uh, for the fenders. Should we time lapse it or do yeah, it? Yeah, let's time lapse it. You time guys want to see it, right? Probably you know. not. Nope. <laughs> no, it's fine. Just because they're charged, it's just stupid. So I don't know where they're at. Also, also, we uh, we never coated this tank, and you can see that there's been some gunk in there. So once we pull this, we're gonna go ahead and clean it and coat it. Yes. Yeah, so we are sponsored by Eastwood now, and Eastwood sent us some uh, metal wash. So this cleanses the the inside of the tank and gets it ready for the coating. And they also sent us gas tank sealer. You can get this on Eastwood. We'll have links in the description. Uh, we need to do this tank. And then when the uh, Trailmaster street build is done, you can see we welded on a factory lid out of a Duramax gas tank. I basically cut out the bung and welded it, grind it down. It looks pretty good in there. And we need to fix the holes in the bottom side of the tank. So once that done is done we can do the same thing with this same process yeah we never use this so i'm just going to go on the instructions on the back that says you know what to do how many teaspoons to put in i'm uncomfortable right now <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to let this gas drain and uh, then we can pull that tank off and set it aside for now so the side cover has also been leaking oil ever since we put this engine back on and we have a little knocking noise in this engine ever since we built it and i think yeah it's never not had it but we just rode it anyways yeah who cares uh we did pull it apart one time to make sure there was not any clearance issues and there wasn't so i'm hoping the valves are tapping the valve cover with that more aggressive cam in it so i'm going to be checking this engine out finding out why it's knocking fixing that before we put it on the next bike and clean it really well i'm telling you the thing is filthy so let's get the torque converter cover taken off wait Good. <laughs> I don't think we need this much <laughs> Done. So the chain kicked when we was at our meetup, by the way. Lonnie kicked it right there. Oh yeah. We don't maintenance our chains like you should, so. We don't even oil them the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Break it. All right, guys. So as you can see, well, it actually don't look as bad on camera, but this thing is caked in oil and dirt. Yeah, you can kind of see. It's mostly oil. All righty, look at this piece of garbage. This thing has been sitting in the garage floor for quite some time. It's got an oil leak, uh, probably from the side cover gasket. And uh, this engine is the built 301. Oh my goodness, knocking stuff off my wall. It's uh, pretty crusty where it's been sitting around for a long time, but it's always had a knock to it. So basically it doesn't, I don't know, it almost sounds like a rod knock. This has a billet rod. I think a 275 cam, a billet flywheel and some good stuff like that so what we're going to be doing today is trying to figure out why or where the knock is coming from it's very strange i've pulled this engine apart really quick a long time ago probably eight months ago could not find any signs that you know that the uh bearing had any damage i couldn't find any signs inside the block where something was hitting so today we're going to pull everything off of it and probably going to slap a new carburetor on it everything's been set in an extremely long time uh, or I'm probably just going to clean the carb. Pull this old crusty exhaust off and uh, we'll try to see what's going on with this puppy. Oh boy, I had those puppies on there pretty good. Well, 
like super sticky gas. Ugh. Ugh. This was the Arctic 301 is what we called it. Ooh. A little crusty looking. It's my favorite thing about a Hemi engine is you don't have to worry about readjusting the valve lash. This engine needs it readjusted. Oh my goodness. How the valve train comes out, you don't need to worry about it readjusting valve lash if you don't need to. But this engine will definitely need everything readjusted because it's past the break in period. I'm going to pull out everything. Well, that wasn't very tight. And there we go. I do want to check a few things. Since this is the Hemi 301, you don't see much about these engines. I want to check and make sure the, the cam is the same on a non-Hemi and a Hemi 301. That'd be one good thing to check uh, while we got this thing apart. So I'm going to do a little bit of looking. A little bit of seeking and we'll see what in the world's going on. Woo, dog, that thing's filthy. Evenly. That was extremely easy. So definitely check these flywheel pullers out. For the billet flywheels only, they will not work on a stock flywheel. But we did lap this. You can kind of see the lapping in there, maybe, possibly. And it did make good contact. I am going to clean up the magnet on this, sand it really lightly, and shine this up. I mean, running a wee bit rich, it looks like. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but right beside the exhaust valve in between the spark plug hole and the exhaust valve there's a very small like casting chunk it's really strange i've never seen that before and these ports could definitely use some opening up they're really restricted on these hemi heads so it'd be nice to do a nice little port job when we got this off oh my goodness puppy's torqued You can get the crankshaft out. All right, now we can lay, lay the crankshaft right in there. All right, so I got my plastic gauge. The clearance is, I'm gonna trim this down a little bit actually. Uh, the clearance is three thousandths to two and a half, or to three and a half thousandths. Lay our plastic gauge. We're using the red plastic gauge because that fits our uh, tolerances we need make sure to put your rod cap on the correct way we do have our bearing still installed in there basically the uh, oil splash stick you know the oil dipper is on the longer side longer ear of the rod so we're just going to place that on there no you don't need any oil on your crankshaft so we're going to go ahead and put this puppy on there all right so this calls for 26 foot pounds i'm going to start off at at 15 and work my way up a couple pounds at a time now i don't use my torque wrench to break these loose i always use a regular ratchet let's do a little bit at a time the only other thing i think it could be is um in play in the crankshaft because you know these are Chinese engines so if that's the case I can shim the crankshaft to keep that from happening all right there we go and make sure after we do this checking uh, make sure to clean all the plastic gauge from the bearing and the crankshaft if you guys can tell that is dead on three thousandths so we're exactly where we need to be all right so we have everything ripped apart so this is basically what a normal engine build video looks like um you know in the behind the scenes we got junk laying everywhere uh so i think the plan is now um 
I do think I'm going to port the head a little bit while it's off. I'm going to clean everything up, clean the flywheel up, clean the rod really good with brake cleaner, and then use assembly lube. Actually, I just use 1030 synthetic oil that I use in my engines to lube my engines as I'm building them. I may, you know, do a cross hatch real quick on this cylinder. I mean, the engine's really low hours. It just rattled like crazy. So I was always scared to ride it too much. I thought it was going to fly apart. That's literally what it sounded like. So one thing I'm going to do is make sure my flywheel's torqued to spec um, and then check my end play, put my side cover on, check my end play and everything and just go from there. So uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Alrighty, so uh, this is the 301. We cleaned it up. We uh, painted the block gloss black with high temperature paint. And then we have uh, made the edges silver on the block in the head. It looks really nice. Well, we just uh, got the paint off the edges. Look like an old Honda head. One of my subscribers, uh, uh, someone that watches the channel, had done this a long time ago, and I thought it looked crazy good, so we did it on ours. We're going to be putting this thing back together today. Probably going to do a lot of time lapsing, but oh, and we also ported the far out of this head. Like, we didn't open up the intake port a ton, but we just made it where it would flow really well and uh, cleaned up the ports a lot. 301 heads are super restricted. Uh, from stock and we also got from go power sports the shim kit because i think that's where the knocking was coming from uh, they sell this shim kit for small blocks as well as big blocks it comes with two thin two thick ones and you basically put them on your crankshaft before you put your side cover on and you test your in play that looked perverted i think that's where our knocking was coming from everything is tested out like perfect clearance we have no hitting issues with the cam and the rod so I think that's what it was. There's just so much play. And I've had predators like that before, just super sloppy. So let's get to throwing this thing back together. We're going to put the piston in and slap the cam in, get the block sealed up so we can test that plate. Okay, so I just put all my shims on. And good thing I bought two packs of shims. A pack of shims come with two thicks and two thin shims. We had to use three thick and two thin shims on this to get the crankshaft in play where you want it. So now it has about 10 thousandths. I mean, I know you can't see it moving, but it's just the tiniest bit of movement. So that means before, how many thousandths was it? So that's 68 thousandths uh, is what the stock in play was, which was horrible. So that's where our knocking noise is coming from. So you have to check when building these engines your crankshaft in play. And that's just going to keep premature, uh, premature wear out of the engine too, making sure that's checked. So now we can finally button this puppy up for good, hopefully. <clears throat> that's been such a pain, uh, that knocking noise, because I never did want to ride the 301 because it knocked so bad. It's also good to point out the engine lasted too with all that input. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we rode this thing for... Uh, several hours, uh, you know, probably a good five to eight hours with that in play being that bad. And it, the bearings looked really good and everything held together. There was no bad wear in the engine. and bam she's all put together i didn't go in like crazy detail on this engine because uh there's no need but she looks super clean we painted the valve cover this little um little air duct as well as the one under it made it look all nice and we'll heat this engine in stages so basically instead of just starting the engine letting it get to full temperature we want to cure that paint as good as possible so we'll start it up let it get let it run for a few minutes, shut it off, let it cool all the way down, start it up, let it run longer, and then do that three or four times until we're at, you know, full running temperature. But she looks awesome. Now I always put these billet uh, oil, oil dipsticks. They got a neodymium magnet in the end of them. Really nice. You can find these in the links in the description. As well as I had some of these, you know, these come with billet side covers. And from where I put this dial in one side, I have those left over. So just adds a little pizzazz. Oh my gosh, knock this up. So we went with Go Power Sports 26 millimeter flat slide McCooney. 
Uh, we got that head ported. I ported it, and uh, she should be pretty uh, pretty mean. And we just cleaned the side cover up, and she looks great. And Daniel, D Daddy Dan Dan the man, painted this tank, and it was supposed to go back on the 301 mini bike, but unfortunately, it had hairline fractures all over the frame, and is trash. So you'll see in a video whenever I edit it that uh, we got the 301 mini bike frame ready for paint. End up finding hairline fractures all through the uh, frame. It had like one foot long cracks. It's just horrible quality metal. So if you have a Baja frame uh, early or a later frame, make sure you check it over really good because they use really low quality metal and uh, it's just their junk frame. So we're actually trashing that frame and uh, not going to use it. So we're going to be building, which really sucks. So we got this engine ready to be able to get that bike powder coated and take it to Texas with us, but uh, she's trash. So we're going to be building a mini bike frame when we get back from Texas. That does remind me, we'll be at Pate Swap Meet on the 25th, 6th, and 7th at the Go Power Sports booth. Uh, we'll actually be there from 1 to 5 on the 26th and 10 to 5 on the 27th. So come out and see us. Uh, cars and cameras ready to be welding. We'll be down there. Grant from Cart Fab should be down there. So come hang out with us. Uh, I'm going to bring a couple of the bikes, probably the drag mini bike and the high tech one. So uh, come down and see us, hang out with us, and uh, live life at paint swap me there was a ton of stuff last year when we went and there was stuff i wanted to buy but i had no way to get it back home so this year i'll have my truck so if i find something good i'm going to buy it and bring it back and build it so uh let me know if you're down there and you see something cool and uh, we may just bring it home with us but thank you guys for watching hope you liked this video i just wanted to find out what the problem was with the 301 and it ended up being that crankshaft in play so we got it fixed so she's going to rip like a tater chip as cleas mcfarland would say uh, so thank you guys for watching. Make sure to check out all the links to all the parts in the 301 and uh, they're right under the video. Those do help us out and uh, continue to watch our classy, classy videos. We love you guys and God bless.